What's up guys, Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. So I'm here in Denver on day three of our breeding process. Uh, nothing too exciting today. We're still looking at clean plates, um, but there is uh, a little bit I wanted to go over as far as the bacterial colonies. So uh, that lion's mane that I plated or uh, streaked out with the three bacterial colonies has started to grow a little bit more and I can get a close-up but um, you can see those colonies right in the middle they're kind of filamentous so it might be a bacillus bacteria um, don't be fooled that's not mycelium and when I do a close-up you can see a little bit better okay guys so if you can see those two colonies with the blotches kind of around their perimeter. Um, don't be fooled, those are bacterial colonies. Um, so don't mistake that for a mycelium. At this stage, the mycelium would almost look like grainy. And it wouldn't have that perimeter of blotchiness around the side. All right, so we made it through the bacterial stage of the process. Um, probably the majority of those plates from 10 to the three dilution that are covered with bacteria. I don't have much hope for those guys, but we still have lots of clean plates and hopefully those ger the spores will germinate in the next couple days. Um, until then, I kind of wanted to go through a couple other shortcuts. So I'm a big fan of shotgun approaches in mycology. Um, I don't like to put my eggs into one basket necessarily, so I have a couple other strategies that I use when I'm breeding for mushrooms that are you know quick and dirty, so there's a lot more investment per um, container, I guess, than a Petri dish, but at the same time, um, you can get just the same results and less hands-on work so um, I'll show you another approach too um, so for some of the species like agaricons or ganoderma like the polypores that are really hard to get spore prints or even lion's mane um, you can do a direct spore to auger inoculation so I'll post a quick uh, you know 10 second clip of that technique it's really easy you just take a loop go underneath where the spores would be and directly inoculate onto auger. So polypores are gonna have more success at that um, than like a lion's mane because they have much more antimicrobial uh, properties because they're growing a lot slower. Um, and then another technique that I could show you is um, a, a jar multi-spore culture. So you can do this with a number of different substrates. It depends on what, what species you're growing. So for shiitake, for instance, you can get a jar of pure um, wood chips or mixed with sawdust and have a really woody substrate that would inhibit bacteria and you can just take your spore syringe and direct it an, into that jar and you're gonna be selecting for the strongest spores that way. Um, so that would be one technique an, or one substrate. Um, another common substrate is uh, with brown rice or brown rice flour. Um, you can use grains. Um, right here I have my own mix of substrate that I, I'm, I'm using some perlite with brown rice as a nutrient and I'm going to be using that same um, 1 to 10 dilution of the chestnuts um, so I actually started running some of the chestnut the folio to adiposa on this substrate and it seems to be taking off quite nicely there's a little bit of questionable growth right there um, which is why I'm going to inoculate another one of these. Um, I really think that I can get 
some isolates from a jar as well as the plates that I have streaked out and then I'm going to compare those out. Um, so I'll just set up my camera and then show you. It's really easy process. You just draw, draw up um, your spore solution with a syringe and then inoculate it into the top right there. I have a, a pour and then a filter for the air exchange. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. Okay, so this is super easy. Um, you just wanna thoroughly mix your spore solution. Um, you can also just, you know, have prepackaged syringes ready. I'm just using the chestnut that I had prepared for this whole experiment to kind of do a more thorough comparison. So the first round looks like it's going healthy, but I just want to have a backup just in case. Um, so it's as easy as getting your syringe into the solution, drawing up some of the spore solution, and you don't need much more than two mils. Um, that's perfect amount. And then um, if you want to be extra careful, you can spray that with alcohol and let it evaporate, but I'm just going to go ahead and inoculate that into there and then squirt it along the edge here so that you can see when the spores start to germinate and then cap your needle and there you go it's as easy as that so i've got my multi-spore culture in my um, brown rice flour substrate and there's some vermiculite on top just to protect it for when i'm going to be taking this substrate out to fruit it um, it's just a good moisture barrier and spore prevention. All right, so those are some quick and dirty methods. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this content and give it a like if you found it useful. Subscribe if you haven't yet and share this with your friends if you think that they would like it. Um, I'm probably not gonna post any more videos until I get some isolates and then I'm gonna do my isolation technique um, so that's going to be a little bit of a longer one, but until then I'm just going to be keeping an eye on my plates looking for growth and marking them um, As they start to develop so one would be the first one that appears on the plate to the second etc And I'll be keeping an eye on my jars as well as my direct streaks So I'll keep you guys updated on that um, much love